it's good to detection. And uh, we in the last video we talked about the Larabe phonetique international, and then we introduced all the French phonemes so and so forth. But this video we are going to be dealing with a particular section of the French phonemes, and that's the consonants. So we we'll call them les consonnes in French. Now let's dive into it. If you have not subscribed, I want to tell you please subscribe to the channel so you can get the latest video. I'll be sending some other things very soon. So thank you. Now let's go to it. Now phoneme en français. De quoi s'agit-il? Now, when we talk about phoneme in French, we're talking about what we hear, les sons, what we hear, 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 things that consider language like words or part of words that actually makes sense to us you understand by and by and like we said in a previous video we have them in three categories they're called consonants vowels semi-vowels semi-consonants now having said that let's go into our main discussion for this video that is les consonne the consonants now when you say les consonne on part the phoneme prononce avec la perturbation soit passé ou bien uh Total, that is, there is a blockage of air in the ongas of speech. It, it could be partial blockage or it could be total blockage, and then the hair collector comes out. You get to understand why we, they are like that. Now, to describe a particular sound as a consonant, a phoneme as a consonant in French, there are basically two things. Yeah, those aspects are very important. We have what we call lio d'articulation, then we have what we call also uh, mode articulatoire, mode articulatoire, but mode articulation. Now, I'm going to talk about lieu d'articulation more later, but let's deal with the second aspect first of all. Talk about lieu, but le mode articulatoire. Now, we have what we call occlusive here, we have constrictive. Now, you need to take note of these two things. Si on prononce ben, un son en français, il y a toujours la, uh, et les sorts il y a le blocage de l'air complet. If the air is completely blocked and then it comes out with a force like P, Papa, the air comes out with a force. We call that kind of sound occlusive. But on the other hand, we have a sound. On a par exemple un phonème en produisant ce phonème là. Si le blocage de l'air, la perturbation de l'air est partielle, and the air is not completely blocked, but it is escaping. We call that kind of phoneme constrictive. On peut aussi appeler fricatif aussi. You will see that by and by. Now, that's the difference between those two mode production, mode articulation. Pardon. Now, the second is the what we call voisin non voisin. That is, when you pronounce the particular phoneme, it will produce the vibration in the cord vocal. There could be a vibration in your vocal cord. Now, once there is a vibration, take for example, we have B. There's a vibration here. Or I say Z. There's a vibration here. Then, when there's a vibration, we call it sonore. But if there is no vibration, we we'll ask him P, T. We we'll call it sud. So these are the difference: sonor and sud. They have they have, have the third category. What we we'll call it uh, oral or nasal. Now let me if I pronounce a particular phoneme and uh, it's produced only within at the mouth, the buccal cavity. They are said to be oral. As in, let's say we have P, we have D, we have T. Those are oral. We have mo, maman. We have nyo, anyo. Those are said to be nasal. So that's what you should know about the mode articulatoire. Now let's go straight to um, lieu d'articulation, but lieu de production. Where the sounds are realized in the phonetic symbol. Now, before we delve into that one, why is it important to know these descriptions very well? Number one, I want to use the sound B, for example. Now, now in this particular phoneme, the phoneme B, we have for the blue articulation with B, la B, that is the two lips. I'll we'll come to that very soon. But what we just talked about now, the mode articulatoire, we have occlusive, sonore, oral. That's the description at the phonetic level. But at the, phono at the phonological level, you will say B, et tu consommes B, la B, occlusive, sonore. That one is passive phonetic. But you cannot say uh, B is represented by the letter B. The letter B in French orthograph, and then it's distinct from other sound like P and B because it is uh, sonore. Whereas P, this is P here. Whereas P 
pay is sued but bay is on log and then m is nasa and b is aura so that's the way you distinguish them in french phonetics and you also say okay the that sound can appear in different parts of the of the sentence we have for example at the initial position as in as you have it in bone this is what i'm talking about here bone tab middle or tab back also at still at the middle position so those are the areas you start can realize that's how you can uh, give a, a critique of the sun phonologically and phonetically if you are asked to distinguish the sun now let's come to the other aspect what is what called lieu d'articulation lieu de production lieu d'articulation now we have different forms look at the the, the the diagram here this particular diagram you have the bilabia we have the labidonta we have the apical villa or dental sand we have the prepalata we have the palata and villa sand so they are called either of those now let's go to the next thing now let's discuss them for bilabia sand they are produced i let the do left the two lips like pe my two lips come together be mo the two lips produce the sand so when there's a blockage of air and by the two lips there you have the sand now you have for labiodonta we have the upper the upper teeth and the lower lip like fam fam valois that's for f and v they have what called the valet sand or the violet sand or the donta sand why for constructive sands in that particular category they are there is a the point of the tongue the tip of the tongue like this is in contact with the violets they call that why i call that why i have some people call it a violet whereas for the other ones it touches the tongue it touches the teeth the upper teeth they will call it the dental sand so those sands Avule don't I use the tongue and the upper teeth and the avule are involved in their production. Therefore, pre palata you have stuff like for that particular sound, we have the the it involves a partial uh the, the superior part of the tongue, that is the upper part of the tongue, touching the hard palate, give you that sound. For vele sand is we are talking about the, the, the voix du palais, touching the tongue, touching the voix du palais, the soft palate. That will give you that sound. For who less than just one, has touch the lewis, the tongue touching that area. So that is for that. Let's go further. The next thing now, where you see a diagram there. Let's talk about where the sound. This is for bilabial sound. P B and eh? See there. They you have T D. You have the K G. These are the various shaman that demonstrate what I've been talking about in the previous slide. Now let's come to the next thing you need to see now. What we have here is a representation tabular form of all these sounds all these sounds and you can zoom it in your own screen and then you'll see it very well if you see the description that les deux lèvres lèvres et dents long à violet we have long palette du we have long palais mu and they have roulette louette so the various place of production and how it is produced is captured for all the consonant sound now having learned that let's see how we can criticize each of the sand. Let's say, for example, I brought some, I brought some examples here. We want to criticize the sands phonetically now, which will really help us in our phono phonological analysis. Now, let's pick the very first one. I'm going to let's use P, for example, now. For P, Bilabia sand, this is it here, because the two leaves are involved. P is occlusive. There's a, there's a blockage of feathers and it comes out with an explosion. For, so that's occlusive. P, Papa. There's no vibration in my vocal cord, so it's called sued. Pay. Only my mouth is used to produce the sound, so it's called oral, so it's not nasal. That's for pay. Let's pick another sound close to it now. B. B, occlusive, the same way. B, labia, the same way. But there is a vibration in my vocal cord. We call it sonor. That one because sonor. Then, well, it's still oral vowel. So, if you are asked to remove between these two sounds, you should understand that these criteria are important you mentioned them but tell us that the difference is that this sound is sonore for b as i mean b whereas for p it is sued because there's no vibration in the vocal cord so we have a list of other ones then and um i'll just take one look at this sound now z constructive constructive i told you fricative the other time and then dental dental sued hora sonore again that's the difference there that's the difference there so i'm going to stop the video here you can go through the examples. If you have not subscribed, make sure you do that before you end the video. And I'll see you in the next one.